Hey everyone, today I am in my pantry. I took a poll on my Patreon to see if people were interested in long-term food storage and majority voted yes, that yes, you wanted to see what we're doing. So we have a temporary setup here. This isn't like our permanent pantry, but this is just what we're doing for now while we work on the area where we really would like to store things. So you'll see that these shelves are sort of the right dimensions for like large boxes and bins and um, they're not really the most efficient thing for using for canning jars so um, we're just yeah we're working on a different space but for now this is what we're doing so I wanted to go ahead and show you how we categorize things what I consider being used in a, as a working pantry and what is considered long-term storage for us and just kind of how we keep everything flowing so that we don't end up with a ton of expired food at the back of the shelf and we don't end up buying you know 25 more of something than what we need and wasting space or just yeah lots of different things going on here so I'm going to try to make this quick and to the point and we'll see how I do with that. Okay so this is most of our pantry. Um, the light in here is normally really, really dark, so I kind of just rigged this lamp really quick so that you can see what's going on, and that's why this cord is in the way. I have my pantry organized into three different categories. We have our working pantry, we have long-term storage, and this shelf is empty because the canning season isn't over yet, so I have that empty because I'm going to be adding more jars to the shelf as the garden season goes on. Um, that's sort of a mixture of long-term and working, which I'll get into. And then down here is our full-on emergency storage. So we have working pantry, long-term, and emergency. And basically the difference between each one is the working pantry is a rotational pantry. So these foods are things that I come in here and get into occasionally. We've got things like canned beans. These are just like your cheap, typical, whatever, canned, you know, um, dry goods and see something on sale and I wanna buy some multiples of it because it's a fantastic price and I know we're gonna eat it, then it'll go in here. Um, if I use something off of this shelf, I'm going to put it on the list and make sure to replace it very, very quickly. Um, so the next time I go to the store, I'll buy a new one to replace it. These are all things that we like to have on hand in case of an emergency, if we need to hunker down. We all know how crazy the world is right now. We saw what happened in the spring where grocery stores had empty shelves and things were crazy. And some cities, it may not even be safe to go to the grocery store at times. So um, yes, we are just trying to keep some stuff on hand as well as store up for winter. So that's working pantry. Our long-term food storage, this is where we're storing up for winter. So long-term food storage, main difference, the, the one basic thing that takes something from being a pantry item to a long-term storage item is the fact that when we eat it, it's gone. And we are only going to open long-term storage under very special circumstances. So when I am, when I eat these carrots, they're gone. I'm not going to eat them and then go to the store and buy another one to replace these carrots with. No, these are storing for long term. This is storage for winter. And the hope is that once, and of course, after I fill this shelf up too, um, that once these start dwindling down, we should be getting into another growing season next spring. Um, and we should still into winter have things like pumpkins and acorn squash and potatoes and stuff like that saved up from the garden in cold storage. So those are the two main differences is we're not going to replace these once they're gone they're gone and we're not going to open them unless we've already run out of all of our garden fresh produce or other condiments or whatever so we are only digging into these once we need them that's the main difference between a working pantry item and a long-term storage item and similar rules apply to the emergency storage so this is not emergency storage this is technically working pantry but it's just a bulk size of oats that I got um, because it's cheaper to buy them that way and I just store them in a food grade um, bucket 
but these are our emergency buckets. So these are only for if we need to hunker down at home and we have already used up all of our food. This is like an extreme scenario. This is like a natural disaster or a um, some sort of violence is occurring on the streets and we can't leave our home and we need to stay here or we get very, very sick and we can't go out because maybe we're contagious, those sort of things, okay? So, I mean, the odds of us actually having to use these are very, very slim. And I have a piece of paper in each one with a list of the contents and the date that they were packed. So hopefully a year from when those were packed, they will still be here and I will go through and we will eat up whatever needs to be eaten before it expires and replace it with um, newer dated food. Um, so yes, we do not want to have to eat these, but it's nice to know that they're here. This is about three days to five days of food for our small family of four plus a dog. And um, it's about three days of good eating, like decent food. And then probably two or three more days of just beans and rice. Um, and then there's also some emergency supplies in there as well. Now these are not a survivalist thing. That's a completely separate video. <laughs> this is, these are not, a lot of this food can be cooked over a fire, but these are intended for use um, given the hypothetical situation that we still have power and water. So these are for hunkering down at home. It's not for living out in the wilderness and it's not for, um, you know, some survivalist situation where you don't have running water, that kind of thing. Um, up here is sort of a mixture. So basically uh, you'll see multiples of things because occasionally like I'll just see something that we do eat, even if we don't eat it often, like the barbecue sauce, like that's a little extreme, that, that's way more barbecue sauce than we need. However, it was a great price and we do use it in the slow cooker in winter. Like we make like shredded chicken sandwiches and stuff like that. Um, so I like they were just a really great price and the expiration date was like way out. So I was like, OK, well, we'll have them and we'll use them up eventually. And now I don't have to buy barbecue sauce, but I don't normally do that. I don't recommend hoarding. I think just if you, you know, see things that you use often or use even occasionally, but you know your family will eat it. For example, I know my family will eat all of this stuff. If I have something in the slow cooker and I dump in a, one of these things of salsa, I know my family will eat it. These are not our first choice of foods. These aren't things that we go and grab all the time that we enjoy eating. We generally don't eat that much canned goods or anything of this nature. I mean, we do eat like mustards, dressings, these are some coconut aminos. Like we do eat some of this stuff, but a lot of it is really just to have on hand, just in case, or it's things that we use occasionally. And I maybe saw on for a great price, so I grabbed a bunch of it. Um, for the most part, I think that you can have a great pantry on a budget by simply buying two or three of something you would normally buy one of. So if you're on a budget and you're really wanting to kind of get your pantry going and have some stuff stored up it doesn't have to be complicated you don't need to hoard basically just when you go to the grocery store if you're already buying some say some canned beans or some dry beans because you use them and you know how to use them and you like them or like this is like pancake mix you know these aren't things that we need these aren't these these are kind of some of these things are just things that we like to have but if you're in an emergency situation you're gonna be stuck at home for two weeks or who knows how long it's nice to have those things morale is important so if you really want to get a good start on your pantry just go to the store when you're gonna buy one thing buy two of them or maybe buy three of them don't fill up your cart with 45 things of toilet paper you don't need to buy 50 barbecue sauces you don't need to do that just Grab a couple extra of things you already know that you like to eat and have them on hand. And, you know, slowly build your pantry up. Those are all canning. So the vinegar does take up a lot of space, um, but I, you'd be amazed at how much vinegar I go through with canning um, because we use it to acidify the food. So that's kind of a need. 
so yeah so there's a little look at our pantry I also keep all my canning supplies up high I really think you should things that you grab more often keep at eye level and things that you don't need as much maybe keep up ground level or up higher also I want to point something out um, this is not secured to the wall because like I said this is a temporary pantry situation so I have not put any glass items on this shelf because if we did have an earthquake which we have had a couple of weird ones this year in Idaho um, we don't get them often and we don't get really bad ones but if for some reason we had one I wouldn't want all my glass jars to go flying off the shelf or this tip over and us lose all our food um, so I did put glass over here um, with some strings so if these got to rumbling and sliding around they wouldn't hopefully wouldn't fall off uh, when we make our permanent pantry when we do our permanent pantry we will use this shelf probably and we will anchor it to the wall behind it um, and then we will also build some shelves that are more appropriate height for storing mason jars because you really don't want to stack them because you could get a false seal like if this spoiled and the seal popped and then the weight of this made it reseal we wouldn't we might not know that this one had spoiled because we would have a false seal on it so you really don't want to stack your jars um, ideally you would have a better shelf height that's more practical for having you know like I could have if I if this was split in half I could have two you know double rows of jars without stacking them so that's a little look I hope that answers some questions and let me know down below in the comments if you guys want to know about our three bucket emergency storage if you want to know what's in there I'll probably take a poll on my patreon too and see if my patrons want to know about that I'm happy to share about it.